Hey everyone, Jamie here from TechnicalCafe.com. In this tutorial we're going to be talking about classes and objects in Java, which are a fundamental part of not only Java, but other object-oriented programming languages as well. Um, so the reason that they're so important is because you write all of your code within classes, and then you can take these classes and turn them into objects uh, via a process known as instantiation, and then these objects can then enable you to use code from one class in another class. Uh, so it might sound confusing right now, but uh, let's get into it and I'll show you guys um, what, what this basically means. So here we have two classes. We have bankaccount.java, which has basically all the attributes you'd find in a, in a simple bank account. We have them, the, the bank name, the account holder's name, uh, the, the balance, which in this case is starting at $100. And then we have some methods here, which are, are in Java and other languages uh, are, are a way to do something with the, with, within the class. So in this case, we're going to be just returning the balance. So when somebody calls this get balance method, it's just going to show them whatever is stored in this balance variable here uh, as it returns the, the value of balance. We then have uh, a method called deposit, which takes an amount in and then updates the balance here with that amount. So in this case, it's going to be taking, let's say we enter $100 here, it's going to be updating balance to be whatever balance is plus 100. And then this would then reflect as $200 there. We have the same thing with the withdrawal method with the stipulation here that if the withdrawal amount is greater than the balance of the bank account, it's only going to take whatever is left in the bank account. Um, you can obviously do other things like overdraw, uh, overdraft and whatnot. But let's take a look at the main class here, which has uh, just the main method in it. And the main method is basically where the program starts running from. Uh, there's only going to be one main method within a program, as we didn't have one, uh, if, you didn't, if you didn't notice, we didn't have one in the bank account.java class. Um, and regardless of whether you have 100 classes or just two classes, only one of them can have the main method. So let's go ahead and create an object of bank account class within the main uh, class here. So we can use the bank accounts um, methods and attributes. So in order to create an object or instantiate an object, we're going to be doing something similar to creating a variable. And in order to do that, we're just going to say bank account, which is the, uh, the class type that we're going to be using. Um, we'll give it a name just like with a variable. So my account equals new bank account. And what this new bank account thing is, it's, it's different than creating a variable, is actually a call to the bank account classes constructor method. And that's basically just a method that sets up a class. Um, we're not actually using it here in this class. We didn't create one. Uh, there, the class does have a default constructor method, which uh, happens behind the scenes, so that's why it's not written in here. Although you can change it to do things. Um, we'll talk about that in a later tutorial here. But basically, we just use the, the class name that we want to create an object of. Um, then give the object a name similar to creating a variable and then we just set it equal to the constructor method a new bank account so we're setting up a new bank account object now that we've instantiated not instantiated an object called my account we can do things such as print out uh, any public attributes of the class so anything that's um, public can be seen in other classes so we can print out the bank name by going system dot out dot print line and then within that we'll just say my account dot and I believe it's bank name that we have here. And we'll just uh, terminate that line there and print this. And what this is going to allow you to do is see the bank name within this class. So we printed myaccount.bankName. And since it was public, we could actually access it. Uh, if we try to access something that's private with another class, what's going to happen? Uh, we'll try to print the account holder here. You'll notice that we're going to actually get an error method because this is uh, an error message, rather, because this is not. Uh, something that's public, and it's going to say the field bank account uh, bank dot account holder is not visible. So in order to access this, what we can do is actually go over here and say, uh, see if we have a method within this bank account class that's going to return the account holder um, a variable here since it's private. So we actually do. We have over here um, get name, which is going to return the account holder. And since get name is public, it can take this private variable and then just throw it over um, and return it in this class here. So we'll say my account dot get name and we'll go ahead and run this. You'll notice that it says Jamie even though this very uh, this variable has a private access modifier. We'll talk about more of this uh, in later tutorials too so no, no need to really uh, worry about anything that may be confusing here. So let's take a look at the deposit method. Let's say we want to add a hundred dollars to our bank account. Um, let's go ahead and get the balance which is a method within our class. You'll notice that when we say get balance, we have $100 here. So let's say that what we can do here, let's say we call the um, my account dot uh, deposit, 
which is going to take an amount uh, that's a double. So we'll say let's we're going to deposit twenty-five dollars, uh, and then we'll print out again my account dot get balance. You'll notice that what's going to happen is we're going to update our account to have twenty-five more dollars in it, and we'll have one hundred and twenty-five dollars. Let's say we call my account dot withdraw and we withdraw $25 since we have a withdraw method here. Um, what's going to happen is we're going to end up withdrawing 25 and we should have a value of um, 75 here. And let's say we want to withdraw more than the account has in it. So there's 75 now. Let's say we want to withdraw $100. Well, we included the conditional statement within our bank account um, that says if we want to withdraw something that's more than the balance, only the balance is going to be withdraw withdrew. You can notice that here in our, in our, uh, when we ran this what was what happened was seventy five dollars was withdrawn, giving us a zero amount. So that's basically the basics of objects and classes. Please feel free to play around with this. Um, you know, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. You can tweet me at JamieMCG on Twitter. Uh, and thank you for watching.